believe that uh, in America, because I believe t this is time for revival to come. Yeah. I absolutely do. So as a senior pastor, as a bishop, and as an attorney, I have certain core values that I personally have as it relates to this time that we're in. And I realize that I have to make my decisions based on those values. One of those values is very, very important, being a member, literally, of this city here for born and raised, I recognize that I have to look at the life of those that are unborn, those in the womb. How, how are we gonna protect those in the womb? And I realize even with black babies in the womb, they've been unprotected, and as a result of that, they've been a direct result of genocide, of eugenics as a result. And so if I have to determine who is gonna protect babies in the womb, I have to support and I have to endorse President Donald J. Trump. Also, as an advocate of religious liberty, I care about religious liberty and religious freedom. And I believe that the next civil rights movement actually is gonna be a fight for religious freedom. I believe that the only way that we're gonna be able to stand, we have to be religious freedom fighters ourselves. But if I want to protect our First Amendment rights and religious freedom, I have to support and endorse President Donald J. Trump. I also served as the president of Prison Fellowship under, under Chuck Colson. I also was the chairman of Georgia State Board of Pardons and Paroles. I was a commissioner for juvenile justice. I care about criminal justice and prison reform. I've seen the eyes of those that are in prison that are there many times too long and they're not there for rehabilitation. So if I want to see more executive and bipartisan legislative laws such as the First Step Act, I have to support and endorse Donald J. Trump as President of the United States. I personally attended Howard University Undergraduate School and Law School. I love the existence of historically black colleges and universities. And I want more opportunities for young people to be able to be world changers. So with, in order to have billions of dollars that can come and help those HBCUs, I have to support and endorse the re-election of Donald J. Trump. And lastly, if I want to continue to see a drop in unemployment, and the rate of black Americans and to see economic uh, empowerment of the black community, I have to support and endorse President Donald J. Trump as President of the United States. <laughs> Lastly, if I want to see true change in our nation, hope for our nation, revival in our nation, among black and whites together, I have to support and endorse Donald J. Trump. Well, I'm a preacher, so no, I'm not going to preach, but if, if we was in a good church, I'd say, can I get somebody to give the, the Lord a good praise right now? And one of the things about that moment is we can do that here without being criticized, without being looked at wrong. We can say, let's give God some praise. Well, I am here, I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. I'm from a town that uh, I grew up, I'm a son of a preacher. My mother was an accountant for the local university. I was fortunate enough to go to university because she worked for the university. Um, and so my education was free, thank the Lord. And I wasn't that, uh, I was very fortunate to be able to have good grades, thank the Lord. And so, <laughs> Uh, I, I am a child who grew up in the steel mill era uh, and jobs left like crazy. And I've watched the city in declination. I've been fortunate enough to be all around the world and to do many things. I've never met, I've met many politicians, I've met many leaders. I've never met nobody like this guy. 
I think for number one, it's because he's not a politician. What I've learned over the past three to four years is bureaucracy isn't as strong as we thought it was. You can get things done in a short period of time. You can make a difference. You can keep your word. And he gets attacked quite a bit, and I get it, I understand. Following behind the things he's followed behind and just done, he says what he feels. We mistake that for racism, but I met him, uh, Bruce, we were together, and, and I said, let me test this racism. I know, I'm black. No, 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 and I say that for a reason. I understand being pulled over by police because my car is nice. I understand some of these woes. I am not a compromising black man. I will never compromise my blackness. I'm proud to be a black man. And I will fight for black people as long as I can. Here's the deal, when I met him, he touched me with strong, you know, I'm Donald J. Trump. Uh, he wasn't timid. Then I stood by his daughter, Ivanka, and, she, and it was time to pray. And I say, let me test it again. We were holding hands. She reached out for my hand and she said, let's pray. She was pregnant, I'll never forget it. And she held my hand, I say, a racist man's child would never. So I got several reasons why I'm gonna support him. And I'm ready to take whatever heat because it can't be hot enough because the furnace is in my favor. I believe in righteousness and justice. I don't believe for fighting for justice alone, there must be righteousness. And I don't believe in fighting for righteousness alone, there must be justice. I believe in the economic ability of this man to accomplish economics for all people, but black people as well. He's proven it. I believe that his record is proven, and if we compare it to 47 years of nothingness, I shouldn't say nothingness, I should say destruction. And if I have to prove a history, I have three years of a history that says you got opportunity zones, you have uh, uh, education opportunities, you have prison reform. Uh, I believe in police being uh, reformed and not eliminated. I am somebody who believes this is our time and we must take advantage of this moment. So why am I voting for him? Why am I endorsing him? Because I believe that he is going to keep his word. God bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm Bishop Wellington Boone, and I fully support and expect Donald J. Trump to be the next president of the United States. I, I know a little bit about his background, and they, he came, his forefathers, from the Hebrides Islands. One of the greatest revivals we know in history came from the Hebrides Islands. And so what they're noted for is Calvinism. And Calvinism says that there is a manifest destiny over your life. And this man and his forefathers have said that he's a product of manifest destiny that God determined before the foundation of the world that he would become the president of the United States. Now I can clearly say, say this to you because this is important to understand that by the fact that he has by his fruits, which you have all evidenced by the things you are saying, you'll know them by their fruits, the priorities of scripture he has made here as the president of the United States. Remember it says that promotion comes not from the east nor the west, but the south. God lifts one up and takes another down. 
God made this man president. And then by the fact that he's targeted the inner cities and all of your evidence that he's doing a great job in reaching the inner cities, it shows the favor of God is on the black community. The Bible says not many wise are called, not many noble are called, but I've called the base things of the world to confound the wise. You are a prophetic sign that revival is coming to black America and God is using this man to do it. So we're joining with him because a revival is coming. And let every man be a liar, but let the word of God be true. As we re-elect this man to be president, it is a visible manifestation that the revival is already here. Come on, let's re-elect. Continue to do a great job, Mr. President. It's your day. God bless you. See you next time.